Well, hello, it is I, Chris Brogan, and welcome to This The News for whatever day this is, Tuesday, August 29th, 2017. This is a little show where I show you what I've been reading and what I find is interesting. I think it's kind of a useful opportunity where I can do everything I can to uh, provide for you things that I find are interesting and of value to you. By all means, feel free to look along. You can come to chrisbrogan.com slash cbm to check out at any time the stuff that I have going on for you. That'll show you the links that I have going on. And as far as I'm concerned, it is time to get started. So glad to see everybody here. Thanks for being part of this. Hey, Lynette, Don. Uh, the very first story I have is interesting. Facebook bans pages sharing fake news from buying ads. So this story is interesting in a couple ways. One, hey, good for Facebook because maybe they're going to cut down on stuff that maybe we're going to get sent to information that might not necessarily be true. But then you think about this and there's two interesting pieces to this. One, Facebook has over 2 billion users. And two, Facebook is acting as the decision maker on what is fake news or not. This is a really interesting time because this is a private or a publicly held company, but this is a company where a corporation is deciding access to journalism. Now, uh, don't get me wrong. I think there's a lot of fake news out there. I think there's a lot of crazy news out there, and I can understand any company's choice to say I'm not going to let you do some advertising, but 2 billion people use Facebook, so this bears some consideration. So it's definitely worth giving a, a look at just that article to see what you think about it. Again, and all articles, chrisbrogan.com slash cbm. This story is very similar in a way. Destiny 2 is a video game coming out. There's a particular YouTuber whose name is M. Tashed, or Michael Tash is his real name. And he's saying, boy, I'm a little weirded out because I'm thinking that I'm going to run into problems where uh, YouTube is going to demonetize my videos because there's, for instance, gun use in them. Well, it's a, it's a violent video game per se. It's a first-person shooter. There's going to be guns in it. And they YouTube doesn't allow for things, for instance, they don't want to allow for things like guns in the thumbnails but if you're doing a weapons review in a video game full of weapons that's going to happen so again it's one of those stories where a company is uh, impacting someone's livelihood again a company where lots and lots of people over 1 billion hours of video are consumed every single day and it's an algorithm with a few human beings deciding whether or not some people are getting paid for their efforts. Now, I've always been a big fan of saying, hey, I don't think we should allow any particular platform to make our living for us because it can always come apart in a heartbeat. But that bears paying some attention. Wow, so glad to see everybody here today. Thanks for being part of this. Next up in the story, Netflix, in an interesting advertising campaign, has decided to lend its brand to a weed dispensary. You got that right. Instead of giving out t-shirts, Netflix now has its own branded marijuana. They're not growing or selling it or anything, but they did say that they'd put their brand on uh, to promote a new show called Disjointed. Kind of interesting, don't you think? It's, you know, suddenly we've got... Uh, oh, I just lost that by clicking on the ad. It's interesting because, you know, this is where for a long time any kind of use of any substance like that was either really like fringy but sort of hip and cool to now something that a marketing team decides is a, a good marketing platform because of how much legal marijuana usage there are. Interestingly for today, this is one of two marijuana stories. Another one's coming up in just a little bit. But before I get there, I guess I have to stop teasing and calling it whole paycheck because Amazon has cut food prices for almost as much as 50%. So Amazon uh, made these prices go live yesterday. So things like, for instance, large eggs went from $4.99 down to $3.99 for their organics, you know, organic apples from $2.99 down to $1.99 etc 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 pretty interesting because with amazon's big buying power and their big distribution power uh, things that were very expensive uh, to most people are going to only become expensive to some people and hey jld that is so kind of you thank you thanks for you to say and i'm glad that you're here as well speaking of entrepreneurship this is me trying out a product made for macintosh users if we want to do cool facebook live for mac using uh, 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 Ecamm Live, which is made by a guy in my town. Talk about an, a cool entrepreneur. He did call recorder for Skype. You might have seen that around. And he runs a really cool thing for kids called Code and Circuit. So a good guy to know. 
Speaking of good, interesting, I love talking about storytelling. I love looking at different ways that we can tell stories. And I want to show you a really cool video essay called uh, How to Make a Twist Ending Work. This is a really, really cool video, which will teach you how to build twist endings and what makes them uh, tick and all that. So there are so many really interesting ways that you could apply this to your business and you can apply this to your, uh, your uh, regular st fictional storytelling should you want as well, whichever one makes you cheeriest. Uh, Rob points out for regards to Amazon slash Whole Foods, they have put displays of Echo Dots and the like in their stores, apparently. Yes, so uh, you can get She Who Shall Not Be Named distributed while you're buying your kale loofah sponge or whatever the case may be. So yeah, this, the whole uh, video essay on how to make a, a twist endings work a lot better, really cool, really worth a watch and will improve your business storytelling, but also uh, just be an interesting way for you to look at how information can be passed through. Next up, this is just useful information. Kissmetrics, I think, is one of the best blogs out there for really useful stuff in the marketing and testing side of things. It covers the parts of the world that I don't like to talk about much, which are the numbers, the network, the, the analytics, and all that kind of stuff. So this is a big post about what makes home pages not convert. And I loved the idea. So first off, the basics, you know, you didn't do your customer research. So you know your home pages are going to work if you don't really even understand who your customer is and what they want. So that's a pretty basic one. But of course, it's Kissmetrics, so they go into a lot more depth on this. They explain it. Number two, my favorite, brevity and clarity. This is something that Rob and I have uh, built Owner Media around for such a long time, helping people get smarter and better with their messaging and all that sort of deal. Number three, using a very big active voice on their call to action buttons. You know, that sort of making sure that people take action, you know, click here, explore this vehicle, blah, blah, blah. And that's important. Uh, and making sure that you look for specificity over hyperbole. This is very, very, very important. So to me, what you're looking for is copy that is going to make it clear what you're doing and make it really clear what exactly you're solving. So you're not saying changing the world, you know, you're building software that communicates with everyone. So there you go. Next to last, I think it is, or maybe last, I can't remember anymore, testimonials with nice, smiling, happy faces. Get happy people saying they're buying your damn thing. And last, one page, one goal. And I am just as guilty about this as everybody. Uh, if you're, if you're, page that you're trying as a home page doesn't have just one goal in mind, you are going to knock people off the hook. That was a great article. I thought you should check that out. You can look at any of the links that I've mentioned here by going to chrisbrogan.com slash cbm, chrisbrogan.com slash cbm for Chris Brogan Media, or leave that off and just look at chrisbrogan.com for all kinds of really good, useful things. Uh, it's very interesting. I wrote, uh, Saul Orwell very recently wrote a post about what his thoughts were on networking after hanging out with, amongst other people, myself and Jacqueline in New York City with Ramit Sethi and uh, Derek Halpern and some other people. Hey, Brian, good to see you. And uh, Brad Feld has come out with an article about his thoughts, uh, or rather he's pointing us to Adam Grant's thoughts on effective networking. And one of the things that I really, really loved in this article was this line from Adam Grant that says, if you make great connections, they might advance your career. But if you do great work, those connections will be easier to make. Let your insights and your outputs, not your business cards, do the talking. I'm going to see if I can zoom that in even a little bit more. If you make great connections, they might advance your career. But if you do great work, those connections will be easier to make. So let your insights and your outputs, not your business cards, do the talking. Oh my gosh, there's no better answer. Because I mean, look, I got an email yesterday saying to me, hey, can you hook me up with this person? And this person happens to be one of the most famous people in the world, world record level famous people in the world. And um, this one person, I would have done that for in a heartbeat. But I get requests like that every single day from people who I don't even know. And I think it's just amazing what we do in the effort to try to reach other people but it's never going to work. And so what this article goes on, you know, Adam Grant is saying is basically do the damn work and then people are going to come running to you. That's the best way to network. Totally, utterly agree, uh, agree. Hey, the future is already here. Audi is showing off solar panels that they're developing so that they can panel, uh, power, sorry, their new electric vehicles, meaning they're going to cover the electric Audis with solar panels. So you basically don't even have to 
uh, bother going to the gas station anymore. Uh, if you're somebody like Shlomo and you live in the Pacific Northwest, you're probably not going to be able to drive this thing around ever because it's going to rain every day. Uh, if you live with me in New England, you know, we get about one and a half months of summer. So you might actually get a couple days usage out of your car, but pretty cool, right? I mean, it's amazing how this is happening in our lifetime. We always see all kinds of innovations, but to me, it's interesting just how fast they seem to be coming down. Two more stories to go. I told you I had two stories about cannabis. This is number two. This is a nice article insofar as cannabis shows promise in treating schizophrenia and Tourette's syndrome, which I always thought had an apostrophe S like it was he owned the syndrome. But this is pretty interesting because uh, I find that there's all this new information. <laughs> and by new, I'm, I'm making air quotes, new information in that this has always evidently been known by people who are interested in cannabis and all that. But it's only just coming to the public now as we're starting to decriminalize this and make it more of an option. But, I mean, think about the kinds of medicines that people with things like schizophrenia and Tourette's normally have to deal with versus all natural medicines like cannabis. And I think that it's, you know, if I had a little extra money to invest right now, I'd probably invest in a couple of these different medical procedure efforts going on with cannabis, like for drug therapies and that sort of thing. I think there's just a lot of value heading in that direction. Uh, my last story of the day, I am a big fan of the comic book series Hellboy by Mike Migola. Uh, the movies weren't awful either. There's a new movie coming out. And uh, I don't know if you've noticed this, but Hollywood has had a very long history of replacing um, characters of different uh ethnicities with white people. They call it whitewashing. For instance, most recently, Ghost in the Shell, uh, Scarlett Johansson replaced a perfectly good Japanese woman. Uh, the uh, Doctor Strange took uh, the big mystic person and made him into Tilda Swinton, uh, who's so white she's transparent. And it was going to happen again in Hellboy. And this guy, Ed Scrain, or Scrine, I don't know how to pronounce his name, he, uh, the way this article is like, he steps down from role, he didn't know that this was a deal because he wasn't exactly all that well versed on the character. But the character was a, a mixed uh, breed person from uh, various Asian backgrounds. I say mixed breed in, in that, like, you know, lots of different ancestry. Uh, so he wrote a post saying, hey, last week it was announced that I was going to play Major Ben, whatever that name is, Damio, in the upcoming Hellboy reboot. I didn't really know the character was a mixed Asian heritage. So uh, I, there's been a huge, intense conversation, blah, blah, blah. He basically steps down. He says, whoa, this is really important to me. I think that using ethnically diverse people in Hollywood is an important thing. I'm going to walk away from the role. You know, you could be like, oh, good for you, standing up for whatever. He took, you know, some number of hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe even a million dollars. He just said, I'm all good with that. I think we should really make this work. So there's one thing about making sure that you feel like you're uh, supporting a cause or something like that. But it's a real different kind of experience than that to really put your money where your mouth is. And I feel like Ed really did that with this particular effort. I think that he said, hey, look, this is important to me and to people and that Hollywood needs to get a good message here. You could say he was pressured into it. I'm going to say that is not how that went down. All right, that's the end of our news today. If you want to make a show like this, you can go to cbrogan.me slash ecamlive and pick this up for Mac. It is so fun, so cool, so easy to use, super lightweight. If you're a coder kind of a person, this thing is like so thin and flexible. If you liked the stories you saw and you wanted to follow up just a tiny bit more, you can go to chrisbrogan.com slash cbm and you can see all of the stories that I have for you. All of the links are shared so you can click through them all on your own. You don't need me to tell you what to do. You can read and make your own conclusions just like I made this show. Thank you so much for your time. I'm going to get the heck out of here. Catch you later. If you want to get the old versions of the show or anything like that, again, chrisbrogan.com slash CBM or youtube.com slash chrisbrogan, and you can watch the broadcast there as well. Catch you later. Thanks so much for being part of this.